today we're going to be talking about a concept in gaming known as noob traps or noob bait this is a classification of investments or features that occurs in basically all games but especially in games with limited resources such as gems or in rpg games where your primary resource is your time or your talent points and the idea to cover this topic actually came from i believe a comment on my recent charles martel guide where I came to the conclusion that Charles Martel in the end game really doesn't have that many good uses anymore unless I mean I guess unless he's expertise because he has a lot of stats and March speed or if you're going to use him as like a city garrison or something but those those scenarios are actually really rare like new players will almost never find themselves in that position but the comments are described Charles Martel as noob bait and I got to thinking about the concept of a noob trap which is definitely something that presents itself in many games that I've played in particular other sort of gotcha style games and so I wanted to make this video to warn new players about the noob traps in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers we're switching it up from passion fruit we're going with the peach pear this time before we jump in about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel so go ahead and click that sub button and drop a thumbs up while you're down there now let's quickly define what a noob trap actually is using the most accurate sort source of information of course urbandictionary.com now this definition only has two thumbs up apparently but this is actually a super thorough definition that I think fits the bill perfectly they say an apparently reasonable in-game choice an uninformed usually new player can make which is in fact subpar or even crippling often this becomes clear only a long time after the choice is made by when it's irreversible so one example from a game that isn't rise of kingdoms could be the exodia cards from Yu-Gi-Oh. if you get all five of these cards in your hand or on the field then you automatically win the game and if you don't know much about Yu-Gi-Oh, you might think wow that's okay like that seems like a really great win condition like i should just like this would be a great deck to play but in fact while some people have used exodia and, and you know you could make it work it's really not like a meta top tier combination it's not like winning tournaments even though to a new player this might sound like a really powerful combo you instantly win the game like that sounds really good but in fact it's not that great going back to our definition a new player might think that exodia is good and they might invest their time and money in assembling a deck around exodia only to find that it's not good and they've wasted their time and they've wasted their money on those cards and applying that logic to rise of kingdoms what could we take as some noob traps in rise of kingdoms if you're a brand new player some of these things might trick you they might seem like good investments when in fact they are not and just as a little bit of a spoiler of course the person that commented on my charles martel video i think was actually correct i think that charles martel is a good example of a noob trap in rise of kingdoms now he hasn't always been because he used to be much better in the game but these days because he's so outclassed in the end game you might see Charles Martel's performance in the early game in kvk1 or in pre kvk and you might think wow this is a super powerful legendary I can't kill him in the field he's farming so many kills he's so dominant out in the pvp environment that I should be using my universal legendary commander sculptures to get more of Charles Martel because he is quite rare when you open up the gold keys and we'll talk about gold keys in a second but I'm here to tell you that if you're a new player investing universal legendary commander sculptures into Charles Martel is a bad decision and Charles Martel is not the only noob trap at the beginning of rise of kingdoms in fact there are a lot of early game legendary commanders that I think are considered noob traps or noob baits I think Julius Caesar is a good example of this because he is a legendary commander and he's very recognizable as a historical figure people think of Julius Caesar as this super famous super successful and super influential historical leader and I think well he must be good in a game like rise of kingdoms and you couldn't be farther from the truth his skills are actually quite lackluster they might do something in the early game and there might be some things that you could attempt with him in the late game and I've made videos about that but in in reality he's not meta and he never really is meta and falling in that same bucket would be commanders such as Frederick okay he's 
also another early game legendary commander that you can get he was my first legendary commander ever in fact i got him on october 28th of 2018 okay he was my first legendary and i never really got to use him he's actually really bad and on top of that ragnar is another good example ragnar shows up in a lot of advertisements for rise of kingdoms because vikings as a historical culture are so popular right there's a lot of movies and tv shows about the historical significance of vikings and how they were just brutal deadly warriors and you would think that you know ragnar lodbrok being one of the most famous historical vikings he would be powerful in rise of kingdoms but unfortunately that's not really the case again just like caesar there might be one or two things you could do to make him somewhat usable but in fact he's really not even close to the meta he's very far from it so these are just a couple of examples of free legendaries you might get your hands on but there are other legendaries that fit the bill that you might actually spend gems to obtain and in this boat is richard the first okay richard the first is one of the first wheel of fortune commanders that you can get in rise of kingdoms you can see here that you get him really just from the wheel of fortune there are other ways to get it i don't know why they don't show it here you could buy like the daily special offer for example and other things but the first time you'll get your hands on richard he shows up on the wheel and because the wheel of fortune is a limited time event for example it's around right now and it goes away in an hour and 40 minutes so you would think oh my god i only have an hour and 40 minutes to you know pick one of these commanders to use and of course if you're a brand new player you're not gonna have the choice to pick that's something that happens much later down the line don't worry about that we won't talk about that in this video but when Richard first comes around you think okay well if I don't spend my gems on him now I don't know when the next time is that I'll be able to get him and so a lot of new players might spend their gems to get Richard and also like we said before if you see him with Martell in the open field in the early game he actually can kind of perform decently in PVP. He's very tanky. He has a lot of healing and he has a lot of sustain in the early game. And so players might think that he's broken, that he's OP, that he's a good investment and they might spend their gems on Richard the first. And that is just not a good strategy. If you're a new player, Richard is very bad for PVP, especially KVK two and beyond. I always recommend players max out this first skill. I think it's very good for sort of PVE content and events and things like that. But maxing out the commander is very expensive. It takes 690 legendary commander sculptures to max a commander. Okay. It gets exponentially more expensive as you add more skill points to the commander. So keep that in mind. So a lot of new players might spend thousands of gems on Richard just to find out that he's not actually that good and he's not really that worth it. But it gets a little bit worse because there's also a commander that you can literally buy from the VIP special offer, and that is Hannibal Barca. Hannibal Barca comes from VIP. When's the first time you can get him? VIP 10 through, I think it's 14 is the last one. Yes, VIP 14 is the last one. So VIP 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, five different VIP bundles you would have to purchase with real money to completely max out Hannibal Barca. And this is a commander that, you know, if you are able to get a lot of VIP in the early game from buying things and things like that, then you might be able to get your hands on him very early on. And you might think that, okay, well, that's a great value. I can actually max out a commander just by straight up buying him. And these bundles do have other things, right? Like in the very beginning of the game, a thousand books of the covenant, that's basically 10,000 gems. That's pretty good, right? It's, it, I mean, it, it, you know, for 10 bucks, like if, if you're going to gem in any way, that's fine. But like a lot of these bundles aren't great value they're they're really just they're not great value uh, 2000 books of the covenant sure might be good if you can get vip 13 if you still need it by vip 13 right but i've been playing rise of kingdoms for over five years now and i've never once gotten a single sculpture of hannibal barca i've never bought any of the bundles and i've never felt like i am missing out he is not a good commander he's never really a good commander there's never a really good use for him and so if you're a new player who's spending a lot of money in the game you might think that oh well I can just get this legendary don't do it it's not worth it he really is not good he does not have any good long-term value and he is a couple of hundred dollars to completely max out all his skills and you're going to be very disappointed with him I, again I've I've spent a lot of money on rise of kingdoms and even myself has I've never even touched Barca because that's how bad he is in the game now these are just a couple of commanders that I would consider uh, noob traps at the beginning of rise of kingdoms but as you progress through the game you're going to come across some more noob traps a good example is Charlemagne you actually get access to Charlemagne first 
from participating in winning kvk season one your first lost kingdom event and you might think that because you're actually winning your kingdom was the most powerful out of all the kingdoms in that kvk you might think well this is good surely a good reward it is not charlemagne is one of the worst commanders in the game and so again high off of the idea of winning kvk you may think oh my god charlemagne is good he's not he's a trash commander and that is i mean that's just always been the case same thing with Wu Zetian. She is a commander that you get from KVK season two. And this again is a commander as a garrison commander. She is absolutely garbage. Okay. She is never, I mean, she used to be back in the day, decent in the garrison. She has not seen garrison play in years at this point. And so she is effectively a useless legendary commander. And so her being a reward for winning season two of KVK is kind of a noob trap you might think oh my god she's a legendary that i just got access to from winning this big is a big deal she's not she's not a good commander another noob trap that comes in the form of a vip bundle is actually the trial of the lost kingdom this is actually a legendary weapon that you can get for 100 if you're vip 16 and if you're a new player you might look at some of these legendary weapons and be like oh my god it's so expensive to craft these the fact that I can just get this instantly, you don't have to craft it. You don't have to spend the gold. You don't have to do anything. The fact that you just get it instantly by buying that bundle, you might think, well, that's really good, especially because it gives you 15% calorie defense. And if you look at the best purple weapon, it's only going to give you 13% calorie defense and you have to craft it. Right. Whereas with this, you get more stats. You don't have to craft it. You might think, oh my God, trial of the lost kingdom. It's a no brainer. It's a great, it's a great choice. But the truth is trial of the lost kingdom is actually garbage. It is actually garbage because you can very easily throughout the early and mid game, get a special talented heart of the saint. And that will effectively give you 17% cavalry defense, which is more stats than the trial of the lost kingdom for $100. You're spending hundred dollars on a worse item. It is literal garbage. And in fact, this really isn't a legendary weapon. I mean, it is called legendary here, but it's only level 40. And if you look at literally every other legendary weapon, every other legendary weapon is either level 45 or 50 for the KVK weapons. But if you look at the purple weapons here, they're all level 40. So really trial of the lost kingdom is kind of an epic weapon that is masquerading as a legendary weapon. It's really not legendary. It's really bad. And it costs a hundred dollars. Now, as you're a new player entering into your second season of KVK, you're going to come across a whole new group of commanders that seem to be very dominant in the open field. And especially for rallies, we have Edward of Woodstock, who has a 2,500 single target damage factor. That is actually insane, especially because he also gets a ton of archer health, a ton of march speed on the map. You would think that this commander is broken. You would think that this is a really powerful commander. He has the skill tree. There's a lot to love on the surface about Edward of Woodstock. But unfortunately, Edward of Woodstock is, say it with me, he is garbage there. I, it, there's never really a good chance to use him. Some players use him as rally for KVK two. I think some players now even use Thutmose instead of Edward in KVK two, because Thutmose himself, even as a gold key commander is a better investment than Edward of Woodstock in terms of like longevity, you can use him in the open field and whatnot. So I would argue that Edward of Woodstock, you know, for even for like maybe a well player coming into season two is kind of a noob trap, right? People will think that, oh my God, his rallies hit like a truck. He must be a good commander to invest in. And he's not, he ages like milk. He is very, very bad. So you definitely should not be investing in him. And in the same boat as that is Genghis Khan. Now Genghis Khan is actually in the mightiest governor event. Now he used to be with the fortune. He's mightiest governor. And you know, people are going to see Genghis, Genghis Khan and think, oh my God, this is such a famous historical figure. He was so, you know, dominant during his rise to power in real life that surely now that, you know, he's only available in season two and beyond, he must be good. And that's just not the case. He is a very bad commander coming into season two. You might get excited seeing Genghis Khan show up on the mightiest governor but he is a very bad commander do not invest any legendary commander sculptures in him he is not good you might see his lower rage cost and think that that's unique and exciting it's not he's very bad he's very bad i can't see this enough 
do not invest in Genghis Khan. Okay. Now I think I've covered enough about commanders. Let's talk about some other things that you could do that would be considered noob bait. One of the cool things about gold keys is that you can get legendary commanders that are actually sort of okay. Uh, we have commanders in the game like Mehmed. We have commanders like Thutmose. We have commanders like even Mulan in some instances. Pyrus, right? Maybe, maybe Tao Tao and Martel. But there are some commanders from Gold Keys that are okay. And, you know, I think Martel is a noob trap, but, you know, he's still better than some of the other Gold Key commanders. And one thing you might consider is spending a couple of gems to open a Gold Key. I think why not you have a chance to get a legendary commander this is kind of like doing a pull in a gotcha game if you've ever played honkai star rail if you've ever played genshin impact if you've ever played any of these other you know sort of games where you summon different heroes that's kind of what you're doing here with the golden chest you have a chance to get a legendary commander and so you might think well okay i might as well spend 1200 gems but the reality is that these commanders like i've already explained most of them are not good okay and also your probability of getting them is very very low less than one percent to fully summon and this is less than one percent for a 10 sculpture drop you need 690 to max them by the way so you have less than one percent chance of getting 10 okay so that's your odds and there's only a three percent chance of actually getting a single sculpture at least of a legendary and it could be of a commander that you don't even want for example it could be a gathering commander like cleopatra or like sunduk or like ishida right and so some new players will spend the gems here and it's a huge mistake now you also will have the mysterious merchant and she comes around periodically like when you train troops or something let's see if i can spawn her i can't that's unfortunate but she does come around reset and things like that and you might see a gold key in the mysterious merchant for a discounted rate it might be 600 gems for a golden key and you might think okay well omniarch that's half off surely a half off gold key would be worth it right the answer is still no okay even in like the vip shop it's 600 do not do this there is no amount of gems listen carefully there's no amount of gems that are worth trading for a gold key that the game will actually present to you okay i don't care if it's 200 gems it's not worth it it is not worth it for spending a gold key it's just not worth it okay the results what you get from here is virtually going into the late game you'll rather have the gems i promise you i promise you that is the case gold keys are not as good as you think they are i promise another example of a potential noob trap would be the daily special offer now this isn't that bad it's not that bad some of the things we talked about before are quite bad this isn't as bad but one thing that you'll notice when you first start the game depending on where in the world you live most places will see a commander known as Cao Cao on the daily special offer if you live in mainland china i'm pretty sure you see minamoto here but most of you are probably not watching this video anyway. So regardless, when you first start the game, you might think that $5 to get Cao Cao is a great choice because for five bucks, you're going to get all three of these bundles actually. And if you do the math, well, that's $6. So, okay. You're saving a dollar. That's nice. And each time you're going to get a chest to possibly get Cao Cao and you're guaranteed at least one legendary commander sculpture of Cao Cao. If you open all three of these, right? And so you're thinking, okay, well, you're guaranteed at least one sculptor for $5. You might think that's a good idea. And look, you know, Cao Cao is okay. There are some uses for him, especially in the early game. And he does have PVE uses later on. Sure. Right. Surely. And having his skills maxed out for like bastions and things like that later on the line, like there are some uses for him, but of the commanders that you can get from the daily special offered, Cao Cao is not really one that I would pick. I don't think he's good enough to be spending $5 a day to get some amount of sculptures for him when you need 690 of them just to max him it's kind of crazy right it's kind of crazy and that's not to say that all the commanders in here are bad choice right later down the line you'll be able to choose a commander that you can buy bundles for and i think some commanders are decent right alexander the great guan yu maybe constantine for for your sunset canyon maybe attila if you want to try to rally things maybe mulan for arc of osiris mid battles or something like that i don't know there's lots of different commanders that you can choose from later and some of those are way better value than others but at the beginning of the game it might seem like a really good deal but it's it's not as good of a deal as you think another noob trap that isn't that big of a deal it's not a huge mistake is the hidden lotus city skin at the very beginning of the game when you first start rise of kingdoms if you start in a brand new server you will have an event that comes around called the glory of battle and if you reach a certain amount of power during that event then you will unlock the hidden lotus city skin 
permanently and i'm pretty sure it's 1.5 million power if i'm not mistaken and you might see this city skin as the first you know city skin that you have access to in the game and you might say okay well you're getting cavalry attack and you're losing archer defense but if you're running around with Tao Tao or by bars or Belisarius or Minamoto right these are all early game commanders that you often see during PvP in the open field you might think okay well hidden Lotus is probably a pretty good investment in the early game because you only have to push power to get it and you're gonna push power anyway and so you might spend some gems some speed ups some resources pushing your power in the early game and that may even cause you to spend some money on some bundles just to get your hands on the hidden lotus city skin so you get a little bit of an advantage when you use your cavalry commanders and i'm here to tell you that after five years of playing this and after two attempts i had two choices two options two opportunities to get my hands on the hidden lotus i've passed up on it every time why because it's just not worth it this is not a good city skin five percent cav attack is not good later on the line you're gonna have a ton of different ways to get way better city skins and yes i know that your default city skin gives you nothing that is a bummer but trust me there will be plenty of ways for you to get way better city skins later on the line and they are definitely more free to play friendly than the hidden lotus now moving back into the tavern here you're going to notice a chest on the right here called the equipment chest and if you look here you're gonna have the ability to get blueprints for some legendary pieces of equipment for free just by opening up a crystal key okay you get a crystal key boom you can open up the chest and you might get really good gear right some of this gear like the hope cloak is literally best in slot gear for infantry commanders that's really good guys that's really good especially when you get a talent on it you get the iconic crystal upgrades like this is a great piece to get and there are some really great pieces in here like the ash of the dawn is amazing right you can also get your hands on the navar's control this is amazing these are best in slot equipment pieces that you could just get lucky and get for free right so maybe it's worth a thousand gems. no no not worth a thousand gems don't spend a thousand gems on this don't spend 500 gems on this don't spend 300 gems on this don't spend gems on any of these keys but furthermore if you do get quote unquote lucky and you get the legendary mountain crushers or the legendary commander's boots for example don't craft them okay yes these are legendary pieces and yes you might think that they're good they're not okay they're not best in slot and if you go to dismantle them later you will pay a penalty let's say i want to dismantle the staff of the lost i'm going to get 50 60 70 80 90 blue materials back and if i were to craft that i would get oh look at that it costs 90. now i know mine's talented so that's a little bit different but the point is that you get back all the materials that you spend on that item at least for the base item that's not the case for legendaries okay for legendary equipment it costs 40 legendary materials to craft the boots of the hellish wasteland and if i want to dismantle my boots of the hellish wasteland i'll only get 20 materials back so i lost half my materials gone in the wind in the trash in the garbage okay so there is a penalty to dismantling legendary pieces only legendary not, nothing else and so if you craft something like the mountain crushes or commander's boots you are crafting pieces that are subpar even though they are legendary they're not good and you are punished later for making that choice you will not get back all your materials you don't also you also don't get back the blueprint or the gold right so literally you're making a mistake when you craft these now are they unusable no you you can use them i guess they're just not best in slot and eventually you'll replace them if you're like an actual serious pvp player but these i think would be considered noob traps because you could get them pretty early on the game for free they are legendary you might think they're good and they're not now there are two commanders that i'm going to talk about that you might think are noob traps but i don't actually think that they are and the first one is minamoto minamoto shows up as the first purchase reward in rise of kingdoms okay if you buy any bundle in the game you automatically unlock minamoto and you might think well if he's a purchase incentive surely he's a bad commander and look is he late game meta no but he provides a tremendous amount of value in kvk one and two and when you do eventually get the relic the museum relic later down the line his relic stats are actually insane 60 percent of stats is wild and when you transition in into season of conquest you can definitely make good use out of minamoto behind a commander like i don't know nevsky or maybe even huo right there are some uses for minamoto in the late game and for that reason i don't 
think he really falls in the category of a noob trap now if you buy his bundles thinking he's going to be meta forever sure you're going to be disappointed but he still can be used and in the same bucket as that is Isongye. Isongye is another early game wheel of fortune commander that comes around just like Richard but unlike Richard Isongye actually packs quite a punch he has a five target circular AOE and a 50% skill damage bonus, which is insane. And he has a built in rage engine here. And he also has a decent museum relic, right? One of the better ones for sure. 20% defense, 5% skill damage. I wish it was March speed or something, but still. So is E Song Ye end game meta? Not anymore. Unfortunately, he is no longer late game meta, but you can still use him. He's not completely useless. Okay. He can still be used. He can still farm a ton of kills. Yes. He's a little bit squishy. He is outclassed. I know. I know, but he's still someone that you could possibly use as opposed to, like we said earlier, commanders like Cao Cao, not really usable. Okay. Commanders like Caesar, not really usable. These are, in my opinion, more, uh, you know, noob trap or noob bait because they're just not very good. And in my opinion, I think YSG is more usable in the end game than Charles Martel straight up i think you could still use e song yay he still does a ton of aoe skill damage you have to be a little bit more careful now than ever but sure you could still farm a ton of aoe damage whereas charles martel not really the case so if you see e song yay on the wheel you know is it is he a must-have commander not anymore he's not he's really not and most players probably shouldn't get him but is he a noob trap i don't really think so i think if you get him you know maybe five five one five or five five one one and you know you then you realize that he's not very good you stop there like you could probably use him for something maybe some events maybe sunset canyon you know it's not a great play but i don't think he's really that misleading i think he's decent for a while and you still can get some value out of him and that is pretty much going to do it now if there are other noob traps or some more noob bait that I missed in this video, put it in the comment section below so that way you can help out some newer players. And while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And also, drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel it kind of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and also let me know if you agree or disagree with some of the things that i've mentioned in today's video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace